So welcome to the second part of our discussion of taxation of partnership. So kanina diniskas natin yung difference between uh, general professional partnership and general partnership. So this time, didiscuss naman natin yung tinatawag natin na optional standard deduction. Okay? So, ang general professional partnership or GPP na tinatawag natin, dalawa yan. Pwedeng ang gamitin niya as deduction is itemized deduction. When we say itemized deduction, ito yung mga expenses. So, if the partnership availed of the itemized deduction in computing its net income, the individual partners cannot avail of deductions anymore in computing their respective income tax on their share in the net income of the partnership because the distributive share from the partnership is already net of cost and expenses. Sinasabi lang dyan na once na ginamit na ng general professional partnership yung expenses na yon as deduction, hindi na siya ulit pwedeng gamitin ng individual. Okay? So halimbawa, na nagkaroon ka ng meeting with client, dinala mo siya sa restaurant, then ang tawag dun is representation expense. So once na uh, diniclear na yon ng general professional partnership as deduction dun sa partnership na yon, hindi mo na siya pwedeng i-avail uh, sa sarili mo as deductible or deduction sa net income mo. Okay? So aside from the, op- the itemized deduction, meron din tayong tinatawag na optional standard deduction. Okay? So from the word itself, optional standard deduction Si BIR, binibigyan ka ng option aside from the itemized or instead or in lieu of the itemized deduction, binibigyan ka ng option BIR na ito yung gamitin mo as deduction mo sa uh, gross income. So, if the GPP avails of OSD in computing its net income, the partners comprising it can no longer claim further deduction from their share in the net income. So, the OSD is 40% of gross income, same as corporation. So, if individual, it is 40% of gross sale. So, again, ang, ang partnership, binibigyan siya ng uh, option ni BIR either to use itemized deduction o yung normal na expenses or sabi ni BIR, sige, pwede mo sabihin kay BIR na, oh, sige, wag mo nang wag mo nang ibawas to or wag na natin i-itemize lahat ng expenses, straightforward, ang ibawas mo sa akin is 40% na lang ng gross income. So, pwede yun. Okay? So, punta lang tayo sa example para mas madali siyang ipaliwanag. Okay? So, this illustration um, is for itemized deduction. So, Edward... Happily married with one in one dependent child, formed a partnership with Jacob, single and contented. So, single and contented. Okay? So, wala lang yun. Participate, uh, participating equally in the partnership's income and expenses. The following are the data for the partnership and the partners in 2018. Ayan. So, meron tayong... Yan, paliwanag lang natin yung problem. So, meron tayo dito. Ito yung na-generate ng partnership. May gross income sila na 600. May operating expenses sila na 350. So, aside from the um, partnership, individually, meron din silang na-generate ng income. Si Edward, meron 350 with corresponding expenses of 140. Si Jacob naman, meron siyang income na 400. And may corresponding expenses siya na 220. Again, itong uh, na-generate ni Edward and Jacob is separate siya or iba to dun sa na-generate ng partnership. Okay. So, question number one is... Ay, sorry. Question number one is... Assuming the partnership is a GPP... How much is distributive share of Jacob in the income of partnership? So, assuming na GPP siya, magkano yung magiging share ni Jacob sa income ng partnership? 
Okay, so isolve, isolve natin siya. Again, itemized deduction yung kagamitin natin. So, ito yung um, tawag dito. Ito yung given natin. Okay. So, sabi natin, ang tinatanong lang dyan is share ni Jacob sa income ng partnership. Ibig sabihin, wag na natin ito pakailaman. Wag na muna natin ito pakailaman. Kasi ang tinatanong lang is share ni Jacob dito sa partnership. Okay. So, 600,000 gross income less operating expense of 350. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong distributable income from GPP magkano? 250,000. So, sabi din natin kanina, si Edward and Jacob, nagsishare sila equally. Ibig sabihin, ang share ni Jacob sa partnership ay 50%. So, 250,000 times 50%. Ang share ni Jacob sa partnership is 125,000. So, very straightforward computation lang. Ibig sabihin, 125,000 yung share ni Jacob sa GPP assuming na yung partnership is a GPP. Okay. So, the answer for question number 1 is 125,000. Okay, next, same given, question number 2 is, how much is the taxable income of Jacob? So kanina, partnership yung kinumpute natin, ang tanong naman ngayon is, taxable income ni Jacob, ibig sabihin, hindi natin ito gagamitin kay Edward, hindi na rin natin ito gagamitin, kasi kanina, nakumpute na natin ito, ba? Diba? So ang tinatanong ngayon is, magkano yung magiging taxable income of Jacob Okay So assuming pa rin guys Na GPP to And ang gagamitin natin is Itemized deduction Yan Ito yung kanina natin ba? Diba? Sabi natin kanina May gross income tayo 600 Operating expenses na 350 Operating expenses or Itemized deduction Ito yung nagpe-pertain sa Itemized deduction So meron tayong 250 na Distributable income Share ni Jacob is 50% Therefore ang share ni Jacob sa GPP is 125. So, ang tanong ngayon, magkano ngayon yung kay Jacob mismo? Okay? So, tanggalin natin to. So, answer. Paano gagawin natin? So, kunin ngayon muna natin yung net income ni Jacob without yung partnership muna para mas madali. So, ibig sabihin, 400,000 na gross income with corresponding expenses na 220. Ibig sabihin, meron siyang net income na magkano? 180,000. So, dyan na ba natatapos yon Of course, hindi pa. Kasi sabi natin, kapag GPP, ina-add siya sa taxable income ni partner. Ibig sabihin, yung 125,000, i-add natin siya doon sa net income ni Jacob. So, 180,000 plus 125,000. Meron tayong total taxable income ni Jacob na magkano? 305,000. Therefore, answer for question number 2 is 305,000. Again, assuming na yung partnership natin is general professional partnership. Okay? So, question number... Three. Question number three is, eto na. Assuming the partnership is a general partnership, how much is the taxable income of Jacob? Kanina sa question number two, general professional partnership, ang tanong din is taxable income ni Jacob. Dito sa question number three naman, taxable income pa rin naman ni Jacob. However, assuming na yung partnership is a general or commercial partnership. Okay. So, so isolve natin. Sabi natin na ang general partnership or commercial partnership partnership is taxable as corporation. Therefore, subject siya sa RC or MC. Okay. 
So, meron na tayo kanina na compute na 125,000. Okay. So, disregard nyo lang to. GP to dapat. GP. Then, ito GP. Ayan. So, ang tanong ngayon is magkano yung taxable income ni Jacob? Okay. So, again, kukumpute natin yung individual niya na income. Net income. So, gross income of 400 with corresponding operating expenses or itemized deduction na 220. Therefore, meron tayong net income na magkano? 180,000. So, of course, dyan na ba natatapos yan? Dyan na ba natatapos yun? Of course, Meron ba siyang share sa G sa partnership? Answer is wala. Kasi Kasi ano? So 180,000 'yan na 'yung answer natin for number 3. Ano mangyayari ngayon dito sa 125,000? So ang mangyayari diyan is i-multiply ngayon niya ng 30% na na income tax, then magkakaroon tayo ng net income na 87,500 Anong mangyayari ngayon sa 87,500? So yan naman masasubject siya sa final tax So 87,500 less the 10% final tax Yung net amount nun, yun yung mapupunta kay Jacob Ang gusto lang um, uh, i-pertain itong problem na to Kapag ang partnership is a general or commercial partnership No need na i-add ba? yung share ni Jacob dun sa partnership. Kasi, subject na siya sa final tax. Okay? Okay na. Next, punta naman tayo sa optional standard deduction na tinatawag natin. So, medyo madali lang naman, kung, kung alam mo na yung basic computation for partnership, um, Medyo madali na lang yung application ng optional standard deduction. Kasi papalitan lang natin instead of operating expenses or in instead of itemized deduction, gagawin lang natin siyang OSB. Okay. So assuming same data tayo. Question number 4. Assuming the partnership is a general professional partnership, how much is distributive share of Jacob in the income of partnership? So same, same question tayo. But, in this case, uh, optional standard deduction yung gagamitin natin. Ayan. So, for this example, ang gagawin natin dyan is, kukunin muna natin kung magkano yung income ng partnership. Okay, and since optional standard deduction yung gagamitin natin, which is 40% ng gross income, okay, Ibig sabihin, yung operating expenses natin, itong operating expenses natin na 350, mawawala yan. Mapapalitan niya ng optional standard deduction na 40%. 40% ng ano? Ng gross income. Kapag partnership or corporation, 40% ng gross income. Kapag individual, 40% ng gross sales. Okay? So... Magkano ang optional standard deduction natin? Sorry, sorry. So, magkano ang optional standard deduction natin? 600,000 times 40% equals 240,000. Okay. So, how much is our distributable income? 600,000 less 240,000 equals 360,000. Multiply natin ngayon yan sa share ni Jacob, which is 50%. Ibig sabihin, ang share ni Jacob for the net income of GPP is how much? 180,000. So, the answer for question number 4 is 180,000. Okay. So, madali lang, parang ang concept lang talaga ng optional standard deduction is 
in lieu of or instead of operating expenses or itemized deduction, yung 40% yung gagamitin mo. So, kung compare natin siya sa example kanina, um, do sa first example natin in which ang ginamit natin is itemized deduction, ang naging share lang ni Jacob doon is 125. Unlike dito na 180. Ibig sabihin, mas naging advantageous sa part ng uh, company, uh, sa part ng partnership na optional standard deduction yung gamitin nila. Ibig sabihin kasi nun, instead of 125 yung yung maging share lang nila, naging 180. Mas mataas ngayon yung naging share. So, nasa technique ngayon yun or nasa discretion ngayon ng partnership kung anong mas gusto nila. Mas magiging advantageous ba na na itemized deduction or magiging ad advantageous na optional standard deduction. So, kaya siya tinag na optional, binibigyan ka na option ni BIR to use kung ano yung magiging advantageous para sa'yo. Okay? So, next question. Same data pa rin tayo. Question number 5 is, How much is the taxable income of Jacob? So, ito naman, total na. But instead, option ng standard deduction pa rin yung gagamitin natin for uh, partnership. Okay? So, same data. Ito yung kanina na compute natin na 180,000. Okay, again, GPP itong partnership natin. So, meron tayong 400,000 na gross income. Meron din tayong operating expenses or itemized deduction ng 220. So, sa problem kasi natin, hindi sinabi na nag-avail si Jacob ng Uh, OSD. Ang nag-avail ng OSD is yung partnership. Again, ang partnership is uh, separate and distinct from its owners. Okay. So, hindi ibig sabihin na OSD yung gagamitin ng partnership. OSD na rin kay individual. So, magkaiba sila ng decision. Okay. Therefore, meron tayong net income kay Jacob na how much? 180,000. So, question. Yung 180,000 na share ni Jacob sa partnership is i-add ba natin? I-add or hindi? Remember, GPP tayo guys. Okay? So, answer is? Answer is? I-add siya. Again, kapag GPP ang partnership mo, Kapag GPP ang partnership, ina-add natin sa taxable income ng partner. Kapag commercial partnership, hindi kasi subject yun sa final tax. Therefore, ang total taxable income ni Jacob ay 360,000. Answer for number 5 is 360,000. Okay. So, compare sa corporation, ay kung, kung i- Uh, irarank natin sila siguro ang pinakamahirap na computation is the individual so next is corporation kasi may R seat, M seat, whichever is higher then um, pinakamadali sa tatlo is yung partnership ang mahirap na siguro sa partnership is yung concept na i-identify mo kapag general professional partnership siya or uh, commercial partnership again kapag GPP ina-add siya sa taxable income ng partners. Kapag general partnership lang siya or commercial partnership, hindi siya ina-add kasi yung distributive share ng partners ay subject sa final tax. So, yun lang yung concept ng taxation ng partnership. So, that's the end of partnership. Punta na tayo sa part 3 which is yung exercises. Okay? So, question number 1. The net share received by a partner in a general professional partnership is letter A, part of his taxable income B, exempt from income tax C, subject to 10% creditable withholding tax or D, subject to final tax Again, the net share received by a partner in a general professional partnership is part of his taxable income, exempt from income tax, subject to 10% creditable withholding tax, 
or subject to final tax? Correct answer is letter. Of course, correct answer is letter A. Part of his taxable income. Again, kapag general professional partnership, yung share sa net income ng partner is inaad sa taxable income ng partner. Okay? So, clear tayo doon. Question number two. Which of the following is not treated as corporation? So, parang question na to is combination siya ng um, previously discussed natin na chapter which is yung corporate taxation or corporation then yung taxation natin sa partnership. Question, which of the following is not treated as corporation? Letter A. General Professional Partnership B. Joint Stock Companies C. Joint Accounts D. All of the above Which of the following is not treated as corporation? Of course, correct answer is Letter A. General Professional Partnership So, yung mga taxable as corporation, ano-ano nga ulit? So, uh, number one, the corporation itself. Second, uh, commercial or general partnership, no matter how created or organized. So, meron din tayong joint stock companies, joint accounts, and association and insurance companies. Okay, so ang sagot sa question number two natin is general professional partnership. Okay. Question number 3. Ito yung favorite ng lahat. Statement number 1. If the amount to be distributed to a partner of a GPP is more than 720,000, it is subject to 15% creditable withholding tax. Statement number 2. The distributive share of the partner in a commercial partnership partnership is subject to final tax. Letter A. Only statement 1 is correct. B. Only statement 2 is correct. C. Both statements are correct. Or D. Both statements are incorrect. So, answer is, answer is letter C. Both statements are correct. So, sa statement number 1, tama yan kasi kapag ang distributed share ng GPP is um, more than 720,000, subject siya sa 15%. Kapag less than, subject sa 10%. Okay? Statement number 2, kapag commercial partnership, Ang share is subject sa final tax. Kapag general professional partnership naman, the GPP itself is not taxable. Magiging taxable lang siya kapag dinistribute na sa partner, either actual or constructive. Okay? Question number 4. Statement 1, again. GPP may claim the 40% OSD on the determination of distributable income. Or, statement number 2, a GPP is subject to income tax. Pag ito may nagkamali pa. Letter A, only statement 1 is correct. B, only statement 2 is correct. C, both statements are correct. Or D, both statements are incorrect. So, correct answer is letter letter A. Only statement 1 is correct. So, tama yung statement number 1 that GPP may claim 40% of OSD. 40% OSD of gross income. So, yun yung kayo na kinumpit natin. So, ano nagpamali sa statement number 2? So, GPP is tax exempt Partnership. Okay. Last question. Question number 5. Statement 1. 
the share of the partner in the gross income of GPP is added to his own gross income. Statement number two. The share of the partner in the net income of a GPP is also considered passive income. So letter A. Statements 1 and 2 are false. B. Statement 1 is true, but statement 2 is false. C. Statement 1 is false, but statement 2 is true. Or D. Statements 1 and 2 are true. Okay. So, answer is... Answer is letter B. Statement 1 is true while statement 2 is false. So, so statement 1, the share of the partner in gross income of GPP is added to his, to his own gross income. So, kung makikita natin kayo na sa illustration, ina-add dun sa taxable income ng partners yung share ng uh, yung share from the uh, net income ng GPP. So, statement 2, mali. Bakit? Yung share ng partner in the net income of GPP is hindi siya subject sa final tax, di ba? So, therefore, hindi siya considered as passive income. So, yun yung last question natin. For your exercise, so, yan, practice answering lang ito. Felix is a partner of FA and Company, a GPP, and owns 20% interest. The gross receipts of FA and company amounted to 10 million for taxable year 2018. So yung cost niya were 2,750,000 and 1,500,000 respectively. Okay? So yung 2,750,000 diyan cost of service yan. Ibig sabihin 10 million less 2,750 yung answer do, yun yung gross income mo. Okay? So, less yung 1,500,000 to arrive at your net income. So, ang question dyan is, compute for the net income of the partnership and the net income tax liability of Felix, which is yung partner, if the partnership availed of, number one is optional standard deduction and number two is itemized deduction. So, that will be for your uh, exercise. Thank you. See you on next video tutorial.